Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from University of Pavia and the Center Foundation. The title of this presentation is Comparison between Radial and Bidirectional Responses of a Vasos Related Building Equipped with Concave Surface Ladder Devices. This work was presented at the 16th World Conference on Seismic Isolation, Energy Dissipation and Active Vibration Control of Structures, held in St. Petersburg. This is the outline of the presentation. I will show the scope of the research work and then I'll describe the seismic isolation devices, the case study structure, the selection of the seismic input signal used for nonlinear time history analysis, and finally we showed results and I will draw conclusion, concluding remarks and future developments. So the scope of this work was to fully compare the response of a case study structure against radial and bidirectional seismic events by means of nonlinear time history analysis. In order to do so, a wide set of natural bidirectional seismic events have been applied and equivalent radial input signals have been computed according to a spatial uh, procedure. Finally, isolation devices have been properly modeled by means of nonlinear constitutive laws in order to better characterize the behavior of such devices. This is the main typology of uh, seismic isolation devices used for this work. Uh, this is actually a double concave surface ladder devices uh, with two sliding surfaces uh, with equal radius of curvature and an internal slider which is uh, characterized by a unique steel block. This is uh, a video which shows uh, the theoretic response uh, of such devices uh, against uh, a bidirectional motion according to the cloverleaf orbits uh, ruled by the standard code, the uh, European standard code, uh, UNI EN15129. And as you can see, along both directions, uh, the main direction of motion, uh, its theoretic loops uh, are highly nonlinear in comparison to the radial case. And this is actually what we try to model uh, numerically in the analysis uh, according to the uh, main uh, numerical models available in the literature. Most of the um, details uh, on this research uh, are available uh, in this article uh, which uh, is uh, published in the Soil Dynamics uh, and Earthquake Engineering. So we use the those that data contained in that article in order to fully characterize the frictional behavior of the device uh, for both bidirectional and radial uh, motions uh, and according to two individual values uh, for the average contact pressure. As you can see, we consider the 15 megapascals and 45 megapascal contact pressure and uh, we use uh, um, constitutive law for frictional properties uh, with respect to the velocity effect. Uh, so as you can see, since the material, the sliding material is uh, a PTFE material, uh, we can notice uh, the common behavior um, of uh, those materials uh, which uh, shows uh, an increase of the friction coefficient uh, as the velocity increases uh, up to reaching uh, a constant value. So the case study structure consists of a six-story reinforced concrete frame structure and uh, the isolation devices, as I told you, uh, is uh, made up of uh, double concave surface ladder devices. So in order to consider the full model, but in a simpler way, we applied a static condensation procedure in order to switch from the full three-dimensional uh, finite element model of the structure to a multi-degree of freedom uh, oscillator. So this is actually a special static condensation procedure which has been applied and all the details uh, for this procedure are um, described in uh, the present uh, article which was presented at the Compte in 2019. For the selection of seismic input, a large set of 71 natural bidirectional seismic events uh, has been adopted uh, by using the database uh, of the soft software Rexel uh, by Yervolino et al. 2009. So all the components have been considered uh, and scaled in order to better achieve uh, the spectrum compatibility in comparison to the target spectrum uh, provided by the seismic hazard of the site. This was for bidirectional earthquakes. Uh, actually, we wanted to compare bidirectional seismic events to radial ones. 
and in order to compute uh, a special radial event uh, which was characteristic for uh, the same earthquake uh, in, bi in a bidirectional way, we applied a special procedure which is presented in this paper attached below, uh, which is uh, able to compute uh, a radial signal uh, which is representative of uh, a bidirectional earthquake. So these are results for the spectrum compatibility with respect to the displacement spectrum. As you can see, all the events uh, are very close to the uh, target spectrum uh, provided by the code, uh, by the, scan the Italian standard code. And those events uh, have been applied to the dynamic system uh, in order to carry out the uh, nonlinear time history analysis. And as you can see, uh, the full structure has been computed as a multi-degree of freedom oscillator for both directions, uh, X and Y. And uh, according to the superstructure, the superstructure is linearly modeled uh, according to the condensation procedure uh, shown below. Um, and uh, actually the only coupled equations, uh, the only coupling for the equations uh, is provided by the hysteretic response uh, of the isolation system because uh, we applied for the biaxial interaction of the directions of motion just because we are using uh, double concave surface ladder devices. And these are actually nonlinear hysteretic uh, parameters, uh, which return the um, actual the actual force response uh, of the isolation system. And this is actually the equation for both the components uh, x and y. We can notice the uh, total weight of the structure w dot, which multiplies uh, the whole set of parameters. Uh, the uh, you, we can notice the recentering contribution. Uh, which is just a linear function with respect to displacements along both directions. And then the frictional contribution, uh, which is uh, actually the main frictional force, uh, which is projected uh, along both directions according to the cosines uh, of uh, the velocity. In this section, results are provided uh, in terms of ratio between uh, the response quantity according to the bidirectional motion divided by the same quantity related to the radial motion. And uh, we can notice two cases. The blue one is uh, related to same um, characterization curve according to the radial motion, whereas the red case uh, is uh, actually the most general one. Uh, uh, so according to this case, uh, we consider the unidirectional characterization curve for frictional properties in the radial motion and the proper characterization curve, uh, the bidirectional one, uh, according to the bidirectional uh, motion. So we notice that uh, the variability and uh, the overall distributions for both the average pressure uh, which have been considered uh, are almost the same uh, uh, for, for the considered cases. Uh, and this is mainly due to the common effects of uh, biaxial interaction of the um, directions of motion and the differences uh, between the response, the frictional response uh, of uh, both the radial and the bidirectional uh, earthquakes. So precisely, we know that uh, according to the biaxial interaction of the directions of motion for frictional uh, devices, uh, the main frictional force is uh, stepwise projected uh, along the trajectory of the device. So this means that uh, along both directions, uh, the friction coefficient, uh, we can say that there is an apparent uh, friction coefficient, which is lower than the target value. And this uh, would lead to higher displacement demands in the bidirectional case. Uh, but on the other hand, we know that if uh, the proper characterization curve for bidirectional motion is considered, higher displacement demands um, uh, would not be achieved uh, since uh, the friction coefficient is higher if uh, the bidirectional case uh, uh, is considered. And this is mainly due to the heating phenomena which occur at the sliding interfaces. Uh, during a radial motion, uh, there are always the same portions uh, of the sliding interfaces which are covered by the internal slider. So the heating flux uh, is uh, higher, is much higher in comparison to the uh, heating fluxes uh, which developed uh, during a bidirectional motion. So the higher is the heating flux, uh, 
the lower will become the friction coefficient value. And uh, so both these effects uh, result into the exactly the same variability and same uh, values of displacement demand for both average pressures uh, uh, considered in this study. Concerning the isolation force response, we can see what we are uh, we were expecting uh, so the for the bidirectional friction uh, which uh, provides the highest uh, friction coefficient uh, we have a slightly higher uh, force uh, with respect to the radial case uh, for both uh, the pressures uh, 50 megapascals and 45 megapascals and the same uh, behavior uh, was observed uh, also for base shear response Actually, the interstellar drift response, uh, this is for 15 megapascals. Uh, also in this case, uh, we can notice the same behavior, but what we can also uh, experience uh, from uh, these uh, graphical results uh, is that the variability increases uh, as uh, the number of the story increase. Uh, and this is also what happens, uh, even though the um, variability is lower, uh, also for pressure 45 megapascals. So concluding, uh, the isolation displacement demand is generally higher in the bidirectional case uh, with respect to the radial one by accounting for the same frictional properties. Uh, but uh, as soon as the proper characterization curve is considered, uh, the differences uh, uh, averagely become negligible uh, with the small consequences in variabilities. And concerning the isolation force uh, and the base shear and also the drift uh, response, uh, much lower variability values have been noticed, uh, approximately 5 to 10 percent, uh, and opposite behavior has been found. Uh, the bidirectional curve uh, provides the highest force uh, and the highest drifts. For drift at all levels the building, uh, for th of the building, uh, the mean uh, and the standard deviations slightly increase uh, as upper story are considered, uh, and the proper bidirectional uh, characterization curve uh, leads to averagely higher values. So future developments of the present work uh, is, uh, could be uh, the ex um, to extend uh, the present study to the most common sliding materials used in practice, uh, so not only PTFE-based materials, but also um, other materials uh, equipped uh, into this uh, typology of uh, sliding devices, uh, to implement different geometrical characteristics of isolation devices, uh, and also to consider different uh, case study structures in order to generalize the drawn conclusions. So these are additional references uh, which uh, you may be interested in uh, according to uh, the same topic. I mean, uh, the response, uh, the experimental and numerical response uh, of uh, frictional based uh, devices. And this is it for this presentation. And uh, I really want to thank you for your kind attention.